the summer, the HRA has been performing lake assessments throughout the watershed. Now, on July 9th, we received a report of a potential cyanobacteria bloom, uh, or commonly known as blue-green algae, in Darling's Lake. We arrived on site at Darling's Lake and confirmed that a bloom was indeed occurring here. We have been working with ACAB St. John for the past two years on promoting education and monitoring for cyanobacteria blooms. Our next step was contacting the regional office of the Department of Environment and Local Government and the Department of Health. They took a sample confirming our report and Darlings Lake was enlisted on the public health advisory list where it will remain indefinitely. We knew that we needed to better define the area that was being affected by the cyanobacteria bloom. Was it localized just to one area in Darlings Lake or multiple areas? We partnered with Mike Adams from Rivervids. Mike used his drone to fly over the Darlings Lake area, including the Hanuman River and Kennebecasis River. We quickly realized that the bloom was not contained to one area within the lake. Once we realized the magnitude of the bloom, uh, we knew that we had to act. These are spat collectors. They are a device that helps collect potential cyanotoxins from the water column. In partnership with ACAB St. John, we have two of these devices deployed in the watershed. Once we realized a cyanobacteria bloom was occurring in Darlings Lake, we quickly changed the location of one of our spat collectors and placed it into the lake. Each month, we replace the collector pad. These devices also include a data logger which is measuring light and water temperature, both of which are important to collect as triggering factors for cyanobacteria blooms. We have been taking samples from Darlings Lake since June. These samples include general chemistry analysis and bacterial analysis, including fecal coliforms and E. coli. We also sample for phosphate, nitrate, and nitrite. If these nutrients occur in excess in the water, they can trigger cyanobacterial blooms. Lastly, we have been sampling for microcystins. This will tell us if the cyanobacteria bloom is producing harmful cyanotoxins or if it is a benign bloom. We have taken water samples at these locations. We are still awaiting results on some of our samples. However, from this map, you can see that we need to expand our sampling area to include the areas that we have documented cyanobacteria in order to gain a better understanding of what may be triggering these blooms. Determining what is causing these cyanobacteria blooms in Darlings Lake will take time. Is it the use of fertilizer and liquid manure? We had an exceptional amount of rain this past July. Did the runoff from the fields add too many nutrients into the lake causing the bloom? Why was this year the first year that this has occurred in Darlings Lake? On August 10th, our staff met with the Director of Public Works for the Town of Hampton for a tour of the wastewater treatment facility to determine if its effluent is having a negative impact in Darlings Lake. We learned that the lagoons have recently been renovated and that they have a capacity to serve 11,000 homes while only 1,500 homes in Hampton are currently connected to the wastewater treatment facility, giving it ample capacity. They also provided us with a copy of their water quality monitoring results for June and July of this year, as well as last year. While it cannot be ruled out definitively, the wastewater treatment facility in Hampton is probably not a major triggering source of the bloom. Could the nutrient spike in Darlings Lake be in relation to the COVID-19 pandemic and people staying home more and perhaps exceeding the capacity of their septic tanks? Could it be climate change? Or maybe the bloom in Darlings Lake is a result of a combination of all of the above possibilities. So what is our path moving forward? The Hammond River Angling Association is dedicated to monitoring the situation. Currently, we have reached out to Hampton MLA and Minister of the Environment Gary Crosman in regard to industry best practices for the use of liquid manure and safe watercourse buffer zones under the Livestock Operational Act. We are also exploring alternative soil amendment solutions and creating a larger sampling and effluent monitoring plan for Darlings Lake. We also need your help. If you have lakefront property, please reach out to us and allow us access to the lake so we can expand our sampling area. 
Landowners are also encouraged to take pictures from a safe distance and document time and date of the bloom and send them to the HRAA. This will allow us to better document the size of the bloom and frequency of its occurrence and any potential link to the weather and temperature. The community of Nowidgewalk in Darlings Island is a wonderful, supportive, and beautiful community. And we want you to know that you are not alone in this. Oftentimes, results of the microcystin sampling are not made public, nor any further communication with communities once a body of water is placed on the public health advisory list. At the Hammond River Angling Association, we are committed to remaining engaged with the community of Nuishawak and Darlings Island. We will communicate our results with you as they come in, and we will work with you to determine triggering sources of this bloom and to begin to strategize on mitigation methods. Thank you.